Uh, oh, here we go. Sorry about it. Uh, crash. Hello? Oh, uh, here. Awesome. Yeah, sorry. Computer crashed. I gotta uh, change my operating okay. system here. Okay. Um, no, I was last thing. I just just want to rerun that question. Is that in your main chart of digital and non-digital strategies, like the partnerships and all the open source hardware partnerships, or the conferences that's in there under partnerships, or? Yeah, yeah, they're under partnerships. Okay, so no, they would, good. the, the like conferences it. would be more like uh, in like strategic partnerships with like industry organizations because a lot of these, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of these conventions are held by, you know, these industry organizations or maybe companies as well but mostly you know trade organizations or industries yeah because i was looking at conferences something that like i would say apply to be a speaker for but i haven't really considered it as partnership but i think that's probably a better thing mm -hmm. to do so think about okay what's in it for us what's in it for them and partner on common ground right that's the yeah kind of thinking yeah. yeah or or just think or maybe like being a sponsor or something I mean, we can see like what this partnership would entail, but mm -hmm. maybe it's engagements or like being a sponsor, and they can advertise that you are a sponsor for you know this uh, for this conference, and maybe a sponsorship they'll you know, give you more speaking time or something. We can see yeah. we'll see what this partnership would entail. Yeah, uh, so that's what we were kind of thinking about. Excellent, I like it. Yep. All right. So. Uh, Moving on, we have SEO again. Just to get more in depth in that because a lot of you had a lot of questions on that last week. So chat mm -hmm. will cover that. Yeah. So um, last week I went over some terms that were not really related to Steam Camp. So this time I made just quick list of some words that we thought our tar target demographic would search up. So there's 3D printer courses, startup camp, um, mechanical engineering workshop. It, we know that OSE doesn't just um, just have like mechanical engineering. There's a lot of different components or like um, yeah. fields to that. So it's just yeah. one particular search. Um, we do have screenshots of like the result pages that we'll send over to you. Okay. Um, we don't know how useful that'll be. It's just maybe you could use it for reference, but you could always just search these terms up and something would pop up. So our takeaways from this would be just from looking at the results. We can't really tell if the word, the keywords themselves, are low competition or not, because even if there are um, little-known sites that pop up, maybe those sites are actually using the proper SEO strategies. So that's actually competition that you'd have to go against because they're honing in on those keywords already. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a video provided that goes in depth about how to, you know, some some tips to to go about this. And in that video, there are some websites they provide um, that are really useful, like uh, SEMrush. That's a popular page, or that's a popular website where you can see the most popular pages of like your competitors or you know mm. related firms. Of course, um, I don't know how to say the next name. Arifs, I think, um, shows all the links that each competitor uses, so this helps track oh. backlinks. And one of the tips was find websites with less backlinks because the words they use in those um, pages will be more effective because they don't need as many backlinks, but they're still providing traffic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then um, a thing I was really interested in um, seeing was uh, Google Search Console, which, which is a tool provided by Google that allows you to track rankings and keywords. Um, it's more in depth than Google Trends, I believe, and you can. I think what you would need to do is get the URL for Open Source Ecology, the website, and then input it into the console, and then you would have to verify it, and then they could track your page rankings for different keywords, and then that would be pretty useful, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Google Trends, like last time, um, you could just track the number of searches per each word or for certain types of words. Um, another takeaway would be that incorporating all these terms into OSC would not be the best thing. We would try to focus on specific phrases because um, diversifying all the words into like the meta tags would 
just you'd lose space for like the meta tags that are the best. And we'd find the best words through uh, Google Search Console, of course. Yeah, and, and you want to avoid clustering of keywords in your title tags where you know you have the words in the title of the page or the description on like the results pages that show up. Um, and our last takeaway from this would be that utilizing any keyword with low competition and high traffic doesn't work well anymore because Google will just filter out all the spam words or you could just put in a bunch of unrelated words into your tags but then now the algorithm doesn't even input that. It's more about finding the actual words that will um, drive traffic through Google Search Console. How do we and apply, then, like, so you're going through uh, some background learnings. Uh, this, is bef this is background learnings, and as far as how do we apply all this stuff? So this would be part of the stuff that you guys would do? Like, okay, so how do we leverage this to what's our points of action? That's the points of action would be to use these uh, helpful tools on Google, like Search Console, and then find the words that would be best for traffic, and then go into the website code and just change the the title name or like the description name, and like insert some of the keywords into the content. So that's in the next part, some of the strategies, basic meta tag strategies. I, there's four general types that I separated them into. There's um, mm -hmm. meta keywords attribute, meta title tag, meta description attribute, and meta robots attribute. The first one, keywords attribute, is part of the spammy thing that Google removed. You can't just insert a bunch of unrelated keywords into your website code because so now they'll kind of degrade your website quality and your page won't rank as well. And this part doesn't even contribute to ranking. The most important part for ranking would be the title tag. And this is at the header of a website, the actual title that pops up on the results page. And then right below that is the description attribute. This doesn't really contribute to ranking, but it'll help users when they're reading after the title of the website, if they want some sort of answer, they'll look into the description. And if your description answers their questions, they'll usually be more likely to click your website or, and then more clicks would increase ranking. There's also um, the robots attribute. This is just for the search engines, the, the spiders on Google that will tell them whether you want your website to be indexed or not or follow links on the websites or not. So yeah, so it would be finding the right keywords and putting them into the title tag, title de um, tag um, description tags, and the content of the page. Is this something that we're doing or is this something that you guys would do for us? This would be something that you guys would do or your sysadmin would do. Okay, yeah. so so probably you want to follow up on this. Oh, uh, is this okay? Yeah, keep going, keep going. Mm -hmm. Oh, but Chad, we would, we would provide an implementation plan, right? And all that. Yeah, we will. So provide it'd be like a plan that you guys would follow. Right. So right now we're at the level of going over uh, some of the learnings, and as far as the implement implementation plan, that's the next phase, right? Yeah. 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 So so next week we'll like it's still a sort of like this learning thing phase, yeah. but we'll also have a sort of uh, present you like a PowerPoint presentation just summarizing what we talked about. And then we'll have a, um, a slide called the return implementation. Okay. So we'll be having a methodology of, like, of um, estimating, uh, guesstimating like how, how many people can you expect to attend Steam camps or yeah. be, become aware about open source ecology. So you see like, okay, maybe, maybe you know, in second second glance from our ROIs, maybe this avenue won't be effective for us because you know, uh, based on our ROIs, it's not very high, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of difficulty in implementation. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. then, so then maybe we can cross that out and focus more efforts on something else when we start doing more uh, implementation based research. Can Can you guys share that in an editable doc so we can take notes or? Or do you want to have it to be a fixed doc? We'd prefer if you do it in an open doc so we can make notes and stuff like that. Yeah, um, as we 
as we uh, make the uh, the PowerPoint, we can share it with you if you would, if you would like. We usually pref usually work by um, just providing the deliverables, mm -hmm. and then you see afterwards. Uh, but if we can share it after we you know finish it, so you can take a look early and show your team, and 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 you know they can suggest edits or whatnot. Can you guys use uh, Google Presentation for that, or what do you use? Uh, yeah, so we usually use Google Power, Google, uh, Google, Google slides. Slide PowerPoint, slide Google Slides. Slides, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So that could be made editable, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And also, we um, prior to the pri prioritization matrix, of course, um, we know that you, OSC has looked into a lot of these avenues already, but just whatever you want to confirm, whatever you want to move forward with, um, you can just let us know and we'll focus on that. But these are the branches that we think would be best. What feedback do you need for next time? Are we there yet to... If, if there are any concerns about like um, the ability to implement any of these branches, then um, that would be a good notice for us. Okay, okay. Because yeah. right now we're going through all the things we can pursue in more depth. So what what to focus on would be what I can provide feedback on. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, what's the capabilities of open source ecology? What constraints do yeah. you guys do you have? Yeah. Uh, start that way we can start narrowing down and figuring out like what, mm -hmm. like uh, tailoring our implementation plan towards the needs of open source ecology, because every organization in the end is different, and they all have different needs. Yeah, and different needs and resources, so yeah, OK. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Uh, so continuing on with um, some SEO strategies, mm -hmm. this part is an optional part, adding a sitemap to the website. I think just from looking at OSC's website, there's probably already a sitemap with all the links that are related to the information on the page, on the pages. So I don't think this is too much of a, a thing to even consider. It's just there, just in case. Um, so I guess the bread and butter of this would be some of the tips. It would be listed here. Having a keyword be the first word in a domain name would be helpful. Um, some SEO experts have said that increases traffic slightly. So um, after the HTTPS dot dot slash slash, um, it'd be open source ecology, um, just open source. It's a good thing that it's the first word in the domain name. Um, have a keyword in the subdomain, keyword in the title tag. There is a second title tag called H1 tag that could also have a keyword. Um, I think the good thing about the website so far is that some of the content isn't just sparse. It goes in depth about what your mission is. And mm -hmm. Google's algorithm prefers um, articles with a lot of content explanation. And it ranks that as higher quality. So of course, any expansion of content would be good. And this would, this would be within a page. You wouldn't want a bunch of separate tabs with just a little bit of information. That would be more spammy. Um, here are some, some of the other tips. You can see um, table of contents, high page loading speed. That's important for how your page actually ranks when searches are made. Um, avoid duplicate content. Multimedia to increase the content quality score that Google ranks. And there's some more tips out there, but we will continue looking. And um, of course, we'll provide you the implementation plan moving forward. Do you have any questions? What page are you on here? I kind of lost. I'm on, I'm on page. Uh, I will highlight the extra tips part. We're on page eight. Page eight. Okay, keep going, please. And that's all for SEOs this week. Okay.
And we'll be moving okay. forward to the podcasts with Josh. Yeah, so when we're looking at like the target market and just who we think would be good to show off like these Steam camps and OSC, mm-hmm. we're looking into podcasts, especially mm-hmm. like podcast marketing. It's taking like a real surge recently. Just mm-hmm. I kind of put some statistics. All these statistics are for United States podcasts. So um, some podcast engagement, like 70% of Americans have heard of podcasts. And just last year, there were 20 million new listeners. So you can kind of just see all these statistics. I'm not going to like read it out, like all these numbers, but I don't know, just uh, like I guess frequency, you see like 25% of Americans listen to podcasts weekly. Mm-hmm. And then uh, just the age demographic, it really fits like who we're looking for for the Steam camps as well. So, and then I put like some popular genres as well for um, overall podcasts. I put comedy just to show like that's the top one. But then that kind of compares to the other ones that we saw are related. So there's always like the genres of podcasts. So we thought like news, society and culture, business, science, education, technology, they all kind of fit within the OSC and the Steam Camp like genre. And then, bless you. Uh, you. In terms of like the overall engagement and what open source ecology should do with the podcast is there's two ways to really push the brand. There's you could, like a representative, I would assume like you would also want to do it, could have a guest appearance on podcasts. And this is where like people go on, they just talk about their brand, their open source ecology, the Steam camps. And this is where it's kind of like an interview. Yeah. And the podcast host really just, you can just talk about what you've done and like your whole backstory. It's kind of like the TED Talk. Yep. And then the second way to engage with it would be paid podcast sponsorships. A lot of podcasts have, uh, they have like certain companies or brands sponsor each episode. And then through that, they'll do like five minute like talking about the brand for you. So like this podcast is sponsored by Open Source Ecology. This is what they do. This is why you guys would be interested in it. So under the guest appearances, I have some statistics on like 93% of Avid podcast listeners listen to most of the episode. So that's a lot, like that's a very high engagement of people just in, like listening to what's happening on the podcast. Yeah. And then a lot of the... Uh, the sponsorships it's like the reason why podcast marketing is so like big now is because people really trust the host of all these podcasts they like they since they have the freedom to choose which podcast they can listen to there's like that trust factor in between so if the host is saying something and endorsing this company then that is going to bring these people as well so some advertising statistics that we have is that 81% of podcast listeners pay attention to podcast ads which is very high percentage considering it's like an advertisement and then 54 percent of podcast listeners claim they're more likely to consider buying or participating in an advertised product compared to seven percent saying they're less likely and this is compared to tv or radio commercials so uh, any questions or concerns so far on the podcast it's good insights yeah okay and then um Since this week, I looked into just the United States. I was just looking for, like, ones that you could target immediately and just some statistics here. But I also remember last week, you guys were talking about other open source ecology branches in other countries. So I put some of the countries that have high podcast engagement. The United States isn't even the highest. They have some in, like, the highest is South Korea and Spain, Mm. Sweden, Australia. So we can look more into international podcasts. And then I think... For this project, it would be good to have a primary focus on United States podcasts, and then the other countries can just kind of take the structure that they have on, like, the strategy we come up with towards, like, their area as well. And then at the bottom, I attach, like, two different types of podcasts that I found. There's the Trailblazer podcast, which is actually really new. It started just in 2020, and it's actually features guest speakers so that'd be great for podcasts like you to hop onto a podcast and talk about like spark like change and your outside voice so that's kind of what they look for and that'd be a pretty small uh like viewer base but that's just kind of a good way that you could even if you hopped on the podcast you could use that as a marketing tool and show oh i actually went on this podcast and talked about it and you could send that out through social media channels as well yeah and then Another comparable podcast, I thought, would be Startup Podcast, which is actually really big. It started in 2014. 
they have like hundreds of episodes and a really large listening base. So I attach the links to their Spotify's there. That's kind of where I listen to my podcast. And like personally, I listen to the spot startup podcast as well. So it's like it's pretty cool. They just host like a lot of entrepreneurs to talk about what they've started and like what they've contributed. So I think mm-hmm. both of these would be good options for open source ecology. And in the end, like it also works as a great marketing tool for you guys as well. Yeah. Would the idea here be to identify a number of these and pursue them as one one avenue? Yeah, idea would be to come up with a strategy on how to identify an ideal podcast mm-hmm. and then also a strategy on how to reach out to the podcast and mm-hmm. like just get it all going to get like get you on there. Yeah, I so, love it. And then the other thing I, I talked about and I want to do this still I still want to do the OSE podcast where we interview like the cutting edge thinkers and all open source hardware, mm-hmm. open source enterprise, which is a gold mine there. I haven't gotten around to it yet, but it's on my to do list. Yeah. Yeah, that can be very interesting as well. We can look into that. It's pretty uh that'd be pretty cool if you guys had your own podcast and yeah. people could just listen to like everything related to OSE. So Yeah. Yeah. And the missing link is that like since we're kinda of pushing the limit on a distributive enterprise thing there's not a lot of people who kind of take this whole integrated approach like we have, but there's definitely people that have pieces of it. And as we build mm-hmm. the new civilization, we're, we're saying, okay, well, let's take all, let's study all the existing pieces and interview those pieces, those people and those efforts so that we build upon it. Cause our, one of our principles is to build on industry standards, build on what exists to create the new. So that would be cool. Yeah. Any contribution helps as well. So like, that's kind of the whole thing with open source. So, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think podcasts, do you like the uh, whole idea and branch of podcasts to go with that? I love it. Yeah. Perfect. Love it, yeah. All right, that's all for my end on podcasts this week. Okay. So, yeah. Next, we'll have online courses and open source ecology's like, involvement with that. Yep. And uh, Alejandro will cover that. Okay. So the idea behind these online courses, wait, can you, can you hear me okay? Not great. Can you move your speaker a little better? I'm using my headphones as well. <clears throat> Can you hear me better now? Uh, it's pre- it's audible. That's pretty good. Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. I was using my headphones. I don't think they work right now. Yeah, but speak up though, because you're still a little little soft. Yeah. Okay, so the idea behind the online courses is to compile what the Steam Camps tried to try to offer into an online format. And that the Steam Camps you need to fly out to to the camp and well the first few the first four days is just background knowledge, right? It's uh, yeah. CAD design, it's circuitry, it's like these different calculations. So the idea behind this branch is to compile all that information into an uh, online presentable way. Yeah. Put, the, put them on these platforms in order to raise awareness of the brand. So the three different types of uh, cost structures that follows these uh, online classes is an audited course, which is where basically people are just curious. And so it's kind of like a trial course. It's just something to see if they're, if they're going to be interested in it. A uh, certified course is what huh. mostly draws in the attention because people want to feel that uh, sense that they're working towards something. That certificate is always like a valuable, uh, like a valuable uh, incentive for them to push forward. Yeah. <clears throat> Probably here it would be best to compile the different days of uh, open source and just put them into a series, and in which they could like. Uh, Take to you know complete the course. However, it's going to be different since they will have restrictions, as in they don't have the workshop that you guys offer during the Steam Camps to like, uh, to work on these projects. So, <clears throat> sorry about that. So in this case, uh, different alterations would have to be made, such as uh, uh, print out worksheets or more online projects using uh, CAD Design or SolidWorks. And I just pulled up some statistics based on a survey that they did on Coursera, which is one of the biggest uh, yep. online course platforms. And most of the most of the learners on the platform actually don't come from the U.S. The biggest are in the foreign markets, such as Brazil, U.K., India, and Russia. Hmm. 
and as Matthew said earlier, the average hmm. age of entrepreneurs is around 45 years old. And this lines up perfectly because um, older learners, people that are over the age of 50 are more likely to complete the course compared to younger students. Oh, so wow. this would be like a demographic that we would want to target more compared to the younger side because we know that they would uh, go through it, like complete the course more often. And uh, I listed then some open hosting sites and these are sites where you create your own course and then you handle the marketing and all that yourself. However, there's also sites where you upload your own course and they market it for you and they give you a commission such as Udemy, Skillshare and Corsmos. And then there's sites where you just do everything yourself such as Teachable and V and do. I don't, know, I don't know how to pronounce that. But it yeah, in those, those sites you would have to market it yourself, compile these videos yourself, and then it's basically more of like a, a independent approach compared to other sites just such as Skillshare or Udemy where you use it. And then uh, the last part is just ads on uh, these platforms and just try to try to target audiences that are looking at courses such as CAD or SOLIDWORKS or engineering related courses such as any physics such as thermal calculation, structural or coding and stuff like that. Yeah, one comment I must make on um, the limited engagement during online MOOCs, we can also ship kits as part of that, like part kits for the actual builds. There'll be another option to do it. So there's a revenue model there. Um, yeah. Just the thing I always question about, there has to be like, since we publish most of our stuff online for free, how do we integrate this here? And it could be some value added service that we provide with the courses if we're charging for it, like the certification or something like that. So yeah, while it could be free, it, we can also certify and give you, and that could be done for a fee. So it's consistent with the open source model as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, because I saw a okay. new where in case that participants can't make it, uh, you guys stream the presentations of the Steam Camps to the participants remotely. Yeah. Well, is this something that you can like take to the next level by yeah. adding a series of courses and stuff and like a cost structure to include a certificate? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And my first question is like the energy to do that. That's a serious effort. Like, yeah, I'd have to think about have to think about how to implement this because this would take a lot of time, but maybe that's just part of the stuff we have to do. Um, just go that extra step as we prepare the curriculum for the steam camps. I think on one side, I think that's having the quality of a MOOC, like a really well done course. That's a, even a prerequisite for running the, the regular steam camps, you know? So just trying to think okay. of how we can execute on this to a, the, the quality level that we need. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll definitely help out with ranking, which, uh, branches would be easiest for you in our return on implementation, of course. So mm -hmm. uh, hopefully that will help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Well, it looks like from all I've heard today, like those are all pretty good avenues that seem like very clear return on investments. And so, do you guys have the energy to pursue? Like, do we have to select, or do you do you you gonna evaluate uh, these at this point, or what's the next step? Uh, so the next step is we will evaluate. Mm -hmm. them uh if you want to do all of them we can do all of them like that next week we'll show you the roi and then we'll we'll, we'll say we'll have like a sort of a matrix graph where you'll see in one in the i believe in the uh x axis there it's the um difficulty oh no, no no it's the x axis is the uh return on implementation so how much you can gain and then uh the and then the um, the y axis is more about the uh, cost about the, the yeah the, the the difficulties yeah. of implementing uh, these uh, recommendations so we'll yeah. have a sort of like matrix graph where you can visually see where each thing stands and you know we have some numbers in the side so uh, we can have a sort of ranking on, you know, what what would be the easiest in, in our opinion, and what would be the most uh, would acquire the most return on implementation. But in the end, like, it's up to it's it's uh, your your decision whether you want to take out some branches or you want to do all of them. It really it's, it's up to you. 
it seems like at this point we should evaluate everyone to see which 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 we should right. do, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because 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 there's you know we maybe there's some things we don't know about open source ecology. Maybe there's like some limitations, or maybe you expect in the future some more hands on deck to work on these uh, these initiatives. So. Mm -hmm. It, 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 we, so you know our our judgment on things is might not be hundred percent correct because we don't right. we don't have the full picture, um, and and we don't expect to implement all of these at once. In our implementation plan, we have a sort of timeline. So some of these, even though they might be more difficult, we might say, okay, this is more of a long term, uh, a, more of a long term uh, yeah. recommendation to pursue. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. That sounds good. Sounds good. And then the other, the other, only other question is like, if we don't have the resources to do something, what are strategies for getting those resources? Because then we maybe say, oh, okay, well, let's get investment or however that looks. I mean, I typically don't like the just like for-profit investors, like people who are just putting mm -hmm. in money. We like sweat equity and people who are actually getting involved. That's the kind of investment we like. But if we need yeah. resources and investment, how? best to secure because we always like to think about how do we expand our resource base and simply by calling out for it, being aware that that's another possibility is a first step to getting there yeah yeah um so like a fundraising strategy that would be more of like a uh, another project another yeah. beyond the project scope yeah um but um that's you know we, we can like certainly if you give us a budget take into account we would customize sort of our recommendations to take into account, you know, the, your constraints, and so, and then if you, we can we can also offer, um, you know, like in the appendix, maybe like some other solutions that would be more costly and but more effective in mm -hmm. case, like in the future, you know, you, you get more funding or you know something happens, you get more people working for open source ecology. Yeah. Yeah. Or just the fact, like if we have got a good, good proposition and good implementation plan. I mean, I think it's typically that we can probably go out and get the resources relatively easily. I think so. Um, I think the limiting part is having the clarity of what to do. Yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah. All, right. All right. So uh, that concludes what we have to. Well, what we have right now to discuss um, before we, uh, you know, um, move on next week and discuss next week. Do you have any, any concerns or questions you'd like us to answer? I think this is good. I think we got on a track of what we're hearing today is kind of getting focused on all the stuff I heard today was, I think, spot on in terms of good potential and, and pretty clear actions like pretty clear actionable items. So I, I like where we're going. So I think we should continue and evaluate and see which which uh, we select. Yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah. yeah and um, you know, if uh, next call, so next call is usually a, this call, next call is usually a very uh, important call since it's a prioritization matrix. If you would like to invite any of your staff to come and put, you know, get their input on things, um, okay. a lot of some, some clients usually like to do that too. Okay, excellent. We'll do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that sounds great. So, uh, good job so far. Yeah. All right. So, um, I'll talk to you next week. Uh, I think we'll keep it two thirty to three thirty for now. If there's anything we need to change, we'll message you an email. Send you an email. That sounds really good. Okay. Well, thank All you, right. everybody. Then, yeah. So, we'll look forward to right. next week. Then. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Have a nice week. You too, guys. Thanks, Martin. <laughs> take, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>